the clothes everybody knows zips is zip believe it or not wow you gotta admit any garment just 229 believe it zip zip zips it's the real deal who's the next american idol the buzz is growing could it be one of our local contestants? Join me as we follow their journey and others Monday and Tuesday mornings after Idol for Idol Chatter on ABC 7's Good Morning Washington at 6. Right now at 11, disturbing allegations against a substitute teacher in Montgomery County. What police are asking of all parents in that district. Plus a big boom, then massive flames. The images coming in tonight and the investigation. And you may remember this brazen ATM heist in the district. The new details we're learning tonight. Now, ABC 7 News at 11, on your side. We are glad you're with us this St. Patrick's Day at 11. I'm Kimberly Suters. We begin with a warning for parents. Police want you to talk to your children after a substitute teacher was arrested, accused of sexually abusing an elementary school student. Officers believe there could be even more victims. Our Q McRae talked to concerned parents in Silver Spring. So sick. This, this, is, this is him. Oh my God. 59-year-old Stephen Katz is behind bars facing a sexual abuse of a minor charge. It happened at Cloverly Elementary School in Silver Spring. Oh, we're just disgusted and we don't really know what to do. According to police, a boy told his parents what happened on March 8th and Katz admitted to the crime during an interrogation. We found out Katz started working as a substitute teacher last May and taught second, fourth and fifth grades at Cloverly, including Tawana Michael's granddaughter. Yeah, she was in one of his classes. I understand why um, parents um, homeschool their kids now. Katz is the third Cloverly employee arrested in less than two years. Earlier this year, we told you about teacher's aide Sean Kelly, accused of having and sharing child pornography. And back in 2016, third grade teacher John Vigna was arrested. He's currently serving a 48-year sentence for child sexual abuse. The principal seems wonderful, but it's been, I don't know if she's the one who's hiring these people or what, I don't know what can be done, but it's sickening. We know now Katz had only worked at Cloverly four times, but has also worked at other schools in the Montgomery County Public Schools District. Police fear there could be more victims and want parents to talk to their children about him. In Silver Spring, Q McRae, ABC 7 News. New information in that one Loudon incident we first told you about last night. Police say John Abel turned himself in today after a domestic dispute with a woman where he is accused of firing shots into the air. Abel is now facing several charges. Fortunately, no one was hurt at that popular spot. And new developments in the chopper crash at the Iraq-Syrian border. The Department of Defense releasing the names of the airmen who were killed on Thursday. And among them, two New York City firefighters. Two others from New York also died, along with two men from Florida and one from Colorado. You can find their names on the ABC7 News app. Also tonight, two mall shooting investigations underway. One in California to the left of your screen, the one on the right in Ohio. In Southern California, police say a man shot and killed his ex-wife and then tried to turn the gun on himself. He's in critical condition at this hour. And then in Beechwood, Ohio, a lockdown after a person was shot outside the mall. The suspect is in custody, and that victim is doing all right tonight. In the last hour, it was an emotional press conference. Words from officials after that deadly bridge collapse in Miami. The crews finally recovered the last body tonight. In total, six people died in that accident. This is Florida International University now reveals about two hours before the collapse, engineers were meeting with school officials to discuss whether cracks found were a safety risk. That meeting happening days after this voicemail. We're not concerned about it from that perspective, although you know, obviously the cracking is not good. And engineers and school officials say the cracks did not compromise the integrity of the bridge. Those cracks not necessarily the cause, according to federal investigators, who also say crews were tightening cables when the bridge collapsed. New tonight, just incredible video out of southern Pennsylvania. A house engulfed in flames after an explosion. One person had to be airlifted from the scene with serious burns. The Red Cross helping eight people displaced from the four-unit building, now declared as a total loss. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused that blast. 
and to Savannah, Georgia, where a deck collapsed at a bar. It injured four people. It happened this afternoon during the city's St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Officials say the deck fell on two people who were sitting about 12 feet below it. They were seriously hurt. The bar has been shut down indefinitely. It's not clear what caused the collapse, but deck inspectors often say that when there are large crowds and people move to one side, say to take a picture, that's when these collapses can happen. And we have some new details about this brazen ATM robbery in Northwest that happened back in January. Tonight, we know 32-year-old Armand Boone has been arrested and charged. Police are still looking for two others involved there. They're accused of stealing that pickup truck, slamming into the 7-Eleven on Cedar Street, and stealing the ATM. Police are still offering a reward in that case. And your Stormwatch 7 first forecast here at 11, looking at clear skies out there and chilly numbers as we head into the evening. Those temperatures continue to drop back. In fact, at this hour, checking in at 40 degrees downtown. Those winds are calm, and I do think we'll see 30s and even some upper 20s by later tonight. Skies did clear, as you see as our local satellite radar picture, but well down in our southern zones from Orange County, just down through uh, portions of southern Spotsylvania County. A little moisture is passing by. In fact, as I widen the view, they've actually had some rumbles of thunder right around the the Virginia North Carolina border. This energy will continue trekking eastward and behind it. We're looking at just clear skies, a clear night, chilly, low 30s downtown with 20s in the burbs, a chilly start tomorrow morning but with good sunshine. Mid and upper 50s could be our warmest day of the week. Coming up, we'll talk about clouds returning for the work week on Monday and the potential for maybe some accumulating snow in spots late Monday night into Tuesday morning. Kimberly. It feels like it's freezing outside. St. Patrick's Day celebrations are happening anyway across the DMV. Earlier today, many came out to Shamrock Fest at RFK Stadium, and now people are hitting the pubs pretty hard. Our Q McCray live tonight in Georgetown, and I think, Q, you're feeling the luck of the Irish tonight. Oh, the luck of the Irish, of course, especially right here at Reruns, where they have a special message for all our viewers at home. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Listen, and what would St. Patrick's Day be without the bagpipe It doesn't get more St. Patrick's Day than this. We are live inside Rira's Pub. This is the place to be tonight. Listen, they have all types of balloons up. The aura is white and green. And we also have a bunch of friends out here as well. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Real quickly, you see what they're drinking, right? Okay. We had to. <laughs> Why is today so special for you? It's a great, it's a great reason to just get together with friends and celebrate a different culture. Uh, definitely. Yeah. And um, is it worth the long line outside? Is it worth the weather? Absolutely. And we got here pretty early, so we didn't have to wait that long. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Listen, happy St. Patrick's Day to you guys. Listen, at Reruns only do they have a bunch of great people out here. They also had a live band. I just stopped playing once the uh, bagpipers started up. So, listen, that's the latest here from Georgetown tonight. I'm Q McRae. Kim, back to you inside. All right, I dare you to wipe the smile off your face, Q. <laughs> All right, now to the victory everyone is talking about. It has never been done before. UMBC, a 16 seed, knocking out UVA, the number one team in the country. We went to UMBC's campus today where students and alumni alike say it is a moment they will never forget. UVA is, you know, they're an institution. And, and to see this young upstart team come and uh, really show them who's boss, that was pretty exciting. So used to be underdogs. So